I spent like a good hour taking pictures of this one type of bird that just kind of been hanging on the on the floor by the river and they move quite fast so you kind of have to be ahead of them and try to intercept them when they come into your field of vision or your camera setup and I was able to fire off a few pictures and some videos it's quite fun actually I can see how something like this can drag on and can be something you do for much more time like I didn't think I spent an hour taking pictures but time kind of flew by really really quickly so yeah but I definitely think you know a handheld versus a tripod if you don't have like a fast lens having a tripod really really helps if you don't want that shake you know so definitely like I'm glad that I kind of set up on a tripod to get some at least one sharp shot of the bird like directly and yeah I'm quite happy with that and honestly like this bird really really nice it had like an orange belly it was really really colorful and it kind of stood proud when it stood like on the on the on the rock or on the on the floor or some leaves you know so it was quite interesting definitely I can see how getting into more wildlife photography can be kind of exciting and exhilarating because it's not like landscape photography where you can just set up and watch the light and take some pictures this they move fast like they kind of move fast on the floor they're they're here one place and they move to another so you kind of have to anticipate where they're gonna be so i find kind of moving ahead of them and try to estimate where they're gonna be and hope i get lucky and they move into my field of vision where i have my camera set up and just fire off a few shots and a few videos before they move along and i have to reset up but they're abundant there's a lot of them like there's different different kind of species on the tree that i'm gonna try to maybe photograph now if i can get it i think it's it's more difficult like shooting up with the lens because they're further away this one on the floor you can you can be eye level with them and i think it's a more, more pleasing than having looking up in terms of my camera definitely like when you have the bird hanging on the on the ground was much easier because you can look at it and in terms of depth of field even though this is a 5.6 at 400 millimeter lens it was still like kind of you know if you kind of set up low and looking at the at the bird if the background's far enough and it's not directly behind them it will blur out nicely even if it's not a fast prime or fast lens definitely like I've been looking at the 400 2.8 that's like a dream lens for wildlife and I would like to try it one day maybe own it one day but definitely I want to practice a bit of more landscape photography and maybe save up some money for that lens I think it's on my agenda to get it somewhere down the line I think it would be kind of cool to film some videos using it in the field primarily for wildlife and learning wildlife alongside that lens I think that's a dream lens for me and you know I'm reaching also almost 39 years old one more year I'll be 40 and maybe I'll be having a midlife crisis you know and I think that lens would be my Porsche you know ah but it's expensive though <laughs> but I just love to see like I get excited about the pictures I take with this lens I really would like to see what kind of pictures that lens does and using it I'm sure using it in the field it must be a pleasure so if you ever use that lens a 400 2.8 from Sony let me know Yeah, I always find myself they have a lot of imagination and you know that kind of piqued my interest when I was driving by to stop here for this picture because I like the shape of the tree and it's just I like the fact that it's bare got no leaves on it you can see the full tree but like right now the, the issue I'm having is that the lights kind of hitting the background and I'm losing the light on the tree so in my mind I kind of anticipated being lit up golden, golden hour and I'm quickly losing the light so now 
part of the branches of the tree are in light and part of it is in shadow. You know, 10, 15 minutes, it's just gonna be very different. So I think this is gonna be it for in terms of photography. I don't think the light's gonna get better. It is interesting how light shapes the subject, you know. I was just kind of scanning through the images really quickly and seeing the transition of the light, how it changes the subject. It's definitely really interesting and I think I think I have one shot in there, it's quite interesting. You know, I'll share it on the screen. It's not what I had in my mind, but like I said, you can't control these things and I'm still happy overall with the picture, but definitely could be better and I think if I revisit this tree maybe two weeks from now when it's maybe getting some fresh greenery on it it won't be too busy it still it will be an interesting subject to photograph I think I might revisit this tree two to three weeks in the next month in May maybe it will be a bit more interesting having a bit of color on it as well that fresh green from the spring right now it's still too cold like it's end of April and it's like zero degrees crazy so, I think that's gonna be it for today's video I it's kind of a chaotic video a bit all over but you know I did a little bit of bird photography a little bit of landscape photography and yeah I think it's uh, overall a good day out taking pictures. I think I'm gonna pack up my gear, just maybe enjoy the solitude of nature for a little bit, take it in and then head home. <laughs>